Okay. Um, then kind of going back to different analysis types, is there anything in particular to watch out for when doing a, a modal analysis? <clears throat> There's two things I like to look at in a modal analysis. One, I always like to do some kind of a rough hand calc to make sure that my modes make sense. The second thing I like to do with a modal analysis is if my structure is fixed and it's constrained, I want to make absolutely sure that the frequencies, the first frequency of the model is not zero. If the first frequency of my model is zero, it means something is loose. Something else I'd like to look at is if the structure is flying through space and it's free, and you could do a modal analysis on a freeze that is zero. And that assures that my uh, structure is genuinely free. So those are sort of the two things. I, I check rigid body modes, zero frequency modes. If I should have them, I better have them, all six. If I don't have them, if I, if I don't want to have any, I better not have any. And the other thing is, like I said, look at the mode shapes, make sure they make sense, and you can almost always do some kind of a hand calc. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever run into it, but um, uh, everybody's seen Works Handbook, Works Formulas. There's a companion volume sort of called uh, Formulas for Natural Frequency and Mode Shape by a man named Blevins. And it's essentially the Rourke Handbook with lots of closed form calculations for natural frequencies and mode shapes. So you could always go into Blevins, pull out your thing, do a hand calc, and if it says 30 hertz, your frequency better be, you know, 25, 35 hertz. If you're getting 270, then you know something's wrong. Sometimes it's a hand calc, but uh, generally you can approximate and that's something I look for for modal analysis.